Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. Good evening, Yvonne, and good evening, uh, viewers and learners. So we transition, we looked at ISET 6 on impairment. Now we'll move into government grants. The question is, are grants Is grant, can one consider grants as, as debt or it's just manner from heaven, it's free? If we have these government grants, how do we treat them? So let's hear from ISP, from the International Company Standards Board. Let's hear, let's, let's read what they're saying. Let's just get the guide. It's all about getting the guidance. So, wait for my presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, look at it in a more practical way. I brought you in an example of the Millennium Challenge. The Millennium Challenge account in February 20, 2017, on 24th, specifically, the Millennium Challenge account, Zambia Limited, celebrated the siding of contracts with the nine private sector organizations who have been awarded grants worth about three million quarter. <coughs> oh, this should be three million dollars, sorry. Let me correct this. Mm -hmm. So, on 24th February 20, 20, 2017, the Millennium Challenge account, Zambia Limited, celebrated the signing of contracts with nine private sector organizations who have been awarded or were awarded grants worth about three million to implement various innovative projects in water supply, sanitation, and drainage that are aimed at improving lives of beneficial communities. For those that actually live in Osaka, I think you saw at some point the Millennium uh, Challenge Project were actively on course. So what gap was being addressed? Grants are not just given without looking at the gap, without looking at the objective of what is actually supposed to be to be achieved. So the innovation grants awards that were assigned are part of the this is and this is sorry, it's better I correct this part. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. For the innovation grants award that were signed, a part of the 355 million Lusaka million dollars, which is Saka Water Supply Sanitation and Drainage Project, funded by the United States government through the Millennium Challenge Corporation. And six contractors are at currently at various stages of construction and expansion of infrastructure, water and supply, but this is in the past. That project is almost being concluded. Mm -hmm. I don't know how far they've gone, although I can I can vouch for them. Mm -hmm. So let's look at what the standard says. IS 20 government grants. Mm -hmm. So what's the overview? I is 20 account for government grants and disclosure of government assistance outlines how to account for government grants and other assistance. Government grants are recognized in profit or loss on a systematic basis. The similar principle that we use when we're computing depreciation. So meaning that in the profit and loss we would be actually like some form of amortization, reducing the grant that has been capitalized. 
So government grants are recognizing profit or loss on a systematic basis over the period in which the entity recognizes expenses for the related cost for which the grants are intended to, to compensate. Which in the case of grants related to assets requires setting up the grant as deferred income in the balance sheet or deducting it from the carrying amount of the asset. So I-20 was issued in April 1983. It's a very old standard and is applicable to annual period beginning on or after 1st January 1984. Since then, this standard has actually stood firm, has helped us in, as, in as far as coming up with the, with the best facts on how to account for government grants. So what is the objective of IS-20? Is to prescribe the accounting for and disclosure of government grants and other forms of government assistance. As we are aware, the government is one, if not a major component in the developmental equation of any country. Government, in many cases, they will give grants to organizations that are maybe financially stressed or the certain target that the government wants to achieve. But through that, the government will start giving grants to companies. How should those grants be, be recognized? That is what the standards look at. That's what the standard looks at. So what is the scope? IS-20 applies to all government grants and other forms of government assistance that we have looked at. at it. However, it does not cover government assistance that is provided in the form of benefit in determining taxable income. It does not cover government grants covered by IS-41, which is agriculture. Like what the government is giving fertilizer and all these other things, it is not going to cover that. That should actually fall under IS 41. These are the benefit of a government loan at a below market rate of interest is treated as a government grant. So all these things be looked at. So a government grant is recognized only when there is a reasonable assurance that A, the entity will comply with any conditions attached to the grant and B, the grant will be received. So not only should the conditions be complied with, also that the grant must be received. The grant is recognized as income over the period necessary to match them with the recorded uh, the related costs for which they intended for budget on a systematic basis. Non-monetary grants, such as land or other resources, are usually accounted for at a fair value, although recording both the asset and the grant at a nominal amount. So if you see in the balance sheet as a deferred income, in the income statement, it will come in as income matched against the expenses. It means there are no conditions attached to the assistance specifically relating to the operating activities of the entity, other than the requirement to operate in certain regions or industry sectors. Such grants should not be credited to equity. A grant receivable as compensation for costs already incurred or for immediate financial support with no future related costs should be recognized as income in the period in which it is receivable. A grant relating to assets may be presented in one or two ways as deferred income or by deducting the grant from the assets carrying amount while well, start deducting from the asset carrying amount. And I see that option to be more ideal and most companies use that option. 
a grant relating to income may be reported separately as other income or deducted from the related expense. That's what the standard says. If a, if a grant becomes repayable, it should be treated as a change in estimate. If it becomes repayable. Ideally, it's not supposed to. Maybe you have floated certain conditions and you have to repay the grant. While the original grant related to income, the repayment should be applied first against any related and amortized deferred credit and any excess should be dealt with as an expense where the original grant related to an asset the repayment should be treated as increasing the carrying amount of the asset or reducing the deferred income balance the cumulative depreciation which would have been charged had the grant not been received should be charged as an expense. Disclosure of government grants, how should you disclose them? So the following must be disclosed. One accounting policy adopted for grant, including method of balance sheet. Two, presentation in nature and extent of grants recognized in the financial statement and for huge conditions and contingencies attached to recognized grants. Government assistance. Government grants do not include government assistance whose value cannot be reasonably measured. If you cannot measure it, then you cannot include it. Such as technical or marketing advice. Disclosure of the benefits is required. Points to remember. Recognize the grant when the entity will comply with the conditions attached to the grant. So there are conditions that will come with the grant and you can only recognize the grant if the company is going to apply to those standards. The entity will actually receive the grant. It's one thing saying as the government we are going to give a grant of this much it's another thing if that grant is essentially going to be received. Grants should be recognized according to the deferred income approach using a systematic thing basis. This spreads the income over the period in which the related expenses are recognized. For example, this grant was given for a specific activity that is going to take for three years, and you have a grant of 90 million. That 90 million must be regarded as deferred income. On an annual basis, you take out 3 million as income in the statement of an of in the in the income statement. So that at the end of the third year, you would have zeroized that particular account or transaction. If the grant is used to buy depreciating assets, the grant must be spread over the same life and using the same method. For example, grants and depreciable, depreciable assets. PEP bought an item of property, plant and equipment for 10 million and received a grant of 2 million. The PEP has a use of life of 10 years and has no residual value meaning that proper plant and equipment, the depreciation would be 1 million every year, whereas the amortization of this grant would be 2 million divided by 10, giving you how much? About 0 0.2, or should we say 200,000 quarter. That is what will be amortized over a period of 10 years. So explain how the purchase of the proper fund and equipment and government grant will be dealt with in the financial statement of debt. <coughs> so the proper fund and equipment will be capitalized on the statement of, of financial position as an uncurrent asset at its cost of 10 million. But we are recognizant the fact that out of that 10 million, 2 million is coming through grants. 
which is depreciated over its 10 year use of life and therefore 1 million twice our depreciation of the charge through profit or loss each year. The current value of the PEP of the PPE will be reduced by the same amount each year. It's not a contentious issue, so we totally agree on that one, isn't it, Yvonne? The government grant is for a depreciable asset, and so the two million will be spread over the same life as the proper plant and equipment. So, as PEP has made the condition for the grant, the two million be recognized as declared income and or financial position, which is spread or amortized over 10 years, and therefore 0 0.2 million income will be shown in profit or, or loss each year with deferred income being reduced by the same amount each year and explained on that. They will also speak the deferred income at the starting date between current and non-current liabilities. For the deferred income will show the one that will be amortized within one year, which will be shown in the balance sheet as deferred income, but which will be for the current liabilities. The rest it will see and an uncurrent asset to a deferred income. And the statement of cash flow will show a payment to acquire PEP of 10 million and grant income of 2 million in investing activities. <coughs> and the depreciation and amortization of government grants are both non cash items in profit or loss, and they will need adjusting in operating activities if using the indirect method. We looked at this. If only looked at the cash flow statement, so we know anything that is a non cash item is actually out of bounds in the cash flow statement. Thank you so much. And our next topic, obviously, tomorrow, we'll look at IS 16. If we we'll have a bit of some time, we'll also look at IS 23 on borrowings. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye and have a lovely day.